Hey y'all, I've been asked to chat a little bit about how to study best for AMP. So if you're already in nursing school, yay, um, we'll talk to you in another video. If not, let's start talking about this AMP monster, shall we? First things first, it's not really a monster. It's something you can completely overcome. You have to stop looking for ways to shortcut this process, however, and just start looking for ways to be more efficient in the way that you study instead. I know, look, seriously, everyone is busy. Everyone is busy. But you entered into this whole pursuit of nursing knowing that you were going to have to take anatomy and physiology and that you were going to need to make a really killer grade in anatomy and physiology to be able to get accepted into your nursing program. So don't set yourself up for failure. Don't take five classes along with your AMP or try to take AMP and micro in the same summer session, you know? That's just dumb, right? You're not going to do well when you need to. It's really important that you understand that you cannot memorize this information and dump it out of your brain. When you actually get to nursing school, they're going to expect, as they should, that you have a really firm base to jump from. They're going to expect that you understand about cell membrane function and all of the anatomy of the body and what nephrons do and what alveoli do and what oxygen does, and they're going to want you to know about VQ mismatch and all of that stuff that you learn in AMP. So I'm pretty convinced that one of the reasons I did so well in nursing school theory is because I didn't memorize my AMP. I actually learned it so that I could recall it later, so that when I got to nursing school, I could focus on nursing stuff. I didn't have to go back and, and relearn AMP that I had memorized and dumped. Plus, Try to frame it this way in your brain. You're going to use this AMP knowledge every single day of the rest of your long and awesome nursing career. You need to know it, and you need to know it really well. Do you want to be the patient that gets taken care of by the nurse that doesn't understand anything about AMP? I don't think you do. So kind of frame it in your brain that way, and it might help you to love learning about AMP a little bit more. There are some things that you're just going to have to memorize, the anatomy portion, and you know, that's okay. That's really simple. That just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of repetition. You can do that, no problem. The other thing I can probably suggest is to pay attention to the objectives and the syllabus. The instructors don't just write those for their own good. They're there to help guide you as to what's important. There's a pretty huge book that you have to get through, right? Okay, so maybe not that huge, but there's a big book you have to get through, and so those instructors are just helping give you a guide for that. By the way, those people are wicked smart. You should be using them for your own good. You should be paying attention in class. Um, if there is supplemental material to the text, like online, quizzes and, and whatnot, you should be trying to get to that stuff because it can really help you. Um, in my AMP2 class, there were two of us out of probably 25 that actually worked hard and were prepared when we came to class and interacted with the instructor. Um, guess which two people made an A in the class, right? Just a little side note. If you're one of those people that comes to class on three cups of coffee and three hours of sleep and you sit there like a zombie on your phone or you chat with other people the entire time, dude, you're only messing yourself over. None of the rest of us care that you're going to fail AMP. And um, like everything else in life, what you put into it is what you get out of it. Um, so if you fail class, Please don't blame your instructor. Anyway, sorry, I'll get off that soapbox. Um, here's what I did. I read the chapter before I actually went to class so that I could, you know, be intelligent when I was there. And I usually started way before the actual class on that particular information. Um, some of the people that I went to school with thought I was an overachiever. But to be completely honest with you, um, I just had to start <laughs> before anyone else did because my brain is not as young and spry as it was when I was 20. So I had to have that repetition and I had to take my time about it to be able to kind of grasp all of that stuff. So like I said, I learned best by reading, writing, and then talking about it. So I drew a lot of pictures, you know, like if I drew a picture of the, uh, you know, one of the renal tubules, I would mark the ascending and descending loops of Henle. And then I would mark what each of those areas did, like where potassium was lost and where water was reabsorbed and that sort of thing. I would mark where the particular drugs, you know, like renin-angiotensin drugs would work at in the particular area. And I would, you know, like circle like where we could have problems or what this particular disease state would do, that sort of thing. Um, 
and that helped me a lot. I told a lot of stories to myself too, and I know that sounds a little bit silly, but like if I was talking about the heart, I would tell myself a huge story about the heart and not just, you know, the actual anatomy that certainly would be included, but I would also talk about the flow of the blood through the heart, what would happen if it got backed up in certain places, um, Starling's Law and what that meant and how that could change, you know. Also, things as simple as, you know, the electrical system versus the mechanical system of pumping. You know, I would tell myself all about that. And so by the time I was done, I'd have about a 30-minute little lecture recorded on my little video, I mean, audio recorder. And I would be able to listen to that on the way to school. And as dumb as that sounds, it really helped me to kind of immerse myself in this stuff long term. Um, and then when I got to nursing school, I really had no issue with anatomy and physiology at all. Um, and I was actually pretty stoked about that. Um, especially the stuff that was hard for me at first to understand. I drew lots of pictures and created a lot of stories about so that I could really get those things rooted in my head. Um, so let's just recap a little bit, you guys. Figure out what your learning style is and use the syllabus and objectives as your guide. Use your professor as a resource. Um, tell stories, draw pictures, record yourself teaching the material and listen to it instead of your iPod, you know, on the way to work or school. Most important, I think, take your time. Don't try to cram anatomy and physiology into a six-week class if you know that you have a 40-year-old brain, right? Don't set yourself up for failure. Don't compare yourself to other people. Pay attention in class and plan to spend some quality time with your textbook. You're going to do great. I know you will. Um, you're going to hate that you're having to spend time studying instead of doing the fun things in life. But later when you get to nursing school and everyone around you is having to hurry and restudy all that A&P, you won't have to and you will be really happy. It's going to help you a lot later on down the road in nursing school. Um, anyway, so if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to email me. I'm not sure that this video was just particularly helpful. It's been a long time since I took anatomy and physiology, but I still remember that stuff today. So I think that my plan kind of is effective. Anyway, um, have a great day, y'all. Peace.